that was my vibe back then because I was so I was so worried about fitting in and I was so worried about you know what are people gonna think when I show up wearing this or what are people gonna think when I do this and I find that sometimes like Jack J like he's super smart super smart people sometimes can be a little bit weird you know what I'm saying <laughs> a lot of people didn't fully like believe in Jack and I when we came over to do music from social media because they thought that we were just like these kids who would amass these followers. Sometimes it happens right in front of your eyes and like it's tough to see because you might like this person or even love this person that just wants something from you, you know? And it's so hard to think that they might just be using you when like mm. you feel like you have a genuine relationship with them. Hi, this is Lauren Engel. Today I'm here with Jacqueline. <laughs> hello, hello. How's it going? Pretty good. I like this casual, you know, yeah, interview. Yeah, chat. It's nice. So you're born in Omaha. Omaha, Nebraska, yeah. 1996. Yeah. Were your parents from there as well? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My parents are from. Ne my mom is from New York. My dad is from Nebraska. Oh, what did she move to Nebraska for? She moved to Nebraska to start a family with my dad. So they oh. both went to uh, University of Pennsylvania, so mm -hmm. UPenn, and that's where they met. My dad was a freshman, my mom was a sophomore. And um, yeah, they just hit it off. They mm -hmm. started dating, you know, I think my dad asked her to marry him, I think maybe like five years into the relationship or something like that. And then they moved to Nebraska, Omaha, Nebraska, so my dad could finish the family business, you know, like oh. do the whole thing. So he owns the family business now in Omaha, so that's where they still live. But yeah, I grew up there and my what's dad's the, from there. What's the family business? The family business is this incentives company. So say your company is putting on this event and you need X amount of t-shirts or X amount of pens or X amount of this or that, bags, whatever you can think of, he'll print your brand name on you know, any sort of object, any item, mm -hmm. and then, you know, you have those at your events. Like how, if you go to like, let's say you go to like an iHeartRadio event, they usually give you like a shirt that says iHeartRadio or something, like sometimes he'll make those. Oh. And like, you know, any X amount of anything, he'll make it. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly what he does, <laughs> but I know he, that's pretty much the gist of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when you were younger, you were in show choir, right? I was, yes. Very good research. That was good, yeah. Yeah, I grew up um, with two older sisters, and they kind of influenced me to try out for this thing called show choir, and I got a lot of crap from it. Why? From my guys, I guess. <laughs> because, you know, they were all jocks. They were all football yeah. players and basketball players, soccer players. So they gave me a bunch of crap for that. But, uh, you know, it is what it is, and that's why I'm doing what I'm doing today. So I'm very grateful mm -hmm. that I had that experience. What kind of music were your parents playing in the house when you were growing up? When I was growing up, my mom and my dad were playing, you know, Tom Petty. They were playing some Pearl Jam. They were playing U2. Um, they really liked Coldplay. Was U2 the first like show you went to? U2 was the very yeah. first show I went to. Yeah, so that's, that's where that came from because my parents loved U2. They loved Bono, The Edge, all those guys. And then, um, you know, I can't even think right now. Let's see, uh, Elvis Presley. Mm -hmm. Um, man, it's there's so many, yeah. so many really good artists. But the, honestly, my dad has a great taste in music, and he he loved those those rockers, those just like OG guys who are making authentic music. What kind of music were you? Did you find what was the first music that you found yourself? Found myself really gravitating towards. Mm. Um, you know, I really, I mean, like I always listened to like what my dad listened to. So a lot of Tom Petty, a lot of U2 stuff like that but then when I you know when songs were coming out um, I remember when Hot and Cold by Katy Perry came out yeah, I was so like in good. seventh grade starting to like flirt for the first time <laughs> and I remember there was these girls and they loved to sing like Hot and Cold for some reason I don't know why I remember this but I love that song because of that <laughs> but honestly I mean there, there's there's been great music for a while let's see first first song that really man that's a really tough question there's so many good artists, there's so many good songs. Mm -hmm. Honestly, okay, this is a terrible answer, but if I if I love a song, it doesn't matter if I love you as an artist or not, I still respect you and I love that song for many different reasons. So I feel like that might change my answer. I don't know, like mm -hmm. there's not one specific artist that I would say I like completely mm -hmm. invested into. I've just been a music listener. Mm -hmm. 
How do you describe yourself back then growing up? Myself, man, I was definitely self-conscious, you know, going through high school, very much like aware of, of like me as an individual and aware of like other people. And I would definitely like observe other people a lot. I think a little bit more than I should have in a way that like, made me think too hard about who I was, you know? Mm. Sometimes when you're trying to find yourself, you think so hard about it that it becomes inauthentic. And I feel like that was kind of, that was my vibe back then because I, so, I was so worried about fitting in and I was so worried about, you know, what are people gonna think when I show up wearing this? Or what are people gonna think when I do this? And I, I slowly learned through the high school experience that it's, it's really not about what people think, it's about how you feel and, and are you happy with what you're doing in life? So that's kind of like how I found myself in high school but at the beginning you know elementary school I didn't worry so much about that because you know the popular kids there was no popular kids in elementary school everyone was mm -hmm. just having fun playing with clay and simple stuff you yeah. know when life was really easy but then middle school came around and that's when I started to get like self-conscious and think so much about everything that I did so I would say that was probably, yeah. yeah, me. You know, I was a fun guy. I always had Jack J in my life. He was like my best friend. I had some really great friends in Omaha who I still have today. A bunch of my best friends. And we just honestly always had such a good time in school and outside of school. We always made it a good time to hang with our group, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But yeah. I was definitely, yeah, definitely like a little bit of an outcast, but still in with the cool crowd, mm -hmm. I guess. What are your parents' personalities like? Are you more similar to one of them? Oh man, my mom, she's like the chillest human in the world. She, she's a yogi, like a yoga instructor. Mm -hmm. So she always tries to get me to meditate when I'm home and to like, you know, do yoga with her all the time. Um, and she's, so she's super chill. I have that side of me, of course, yeah. that I like to bring out as much as possible. And then I have um, my dad, who's obviously like, or not obvious, because you might not know him. <laughs> but uh, he, uh, he's a really, really cool guy. He's super smart. He was like fourth in his class, oh, in his graduating uh. class. So he's super smart. And I find that sometimes, like Jack J, like he's super smart. Super smart people sometimes can be a little bit weird. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I gravitate towards people like Jack and my dad, is because like I like people who are different, who are weird, you know, and have that spunk about them. They're a little goofy but at the same time they're so intelligent so that's why i like when people are super intelligent because it, it gives them that gives them that edge that or not edge but that uniqueness about them that i like so yeah mm -hmm. my dad's i definitely feel like i'm a little bit of both of my parents which makes sense because like biologically that's what it is but um they've definitely influenced me in a lot of ways and i would say you know of course i'm like my parents but i grew up with my friends as well so I'm very much like my friends so mm. it's kind of like an influence of all those mm -hmm. what were your favorite subjects my favorite subject in school well okay elementary school I would have told you my favorite subject was recess um, <laughs> I did like school because it helped me socialize and mm -hmm. become a person like a real human who can talk to people but um, I never really was invested in school until high school which sounds crazy because there's like I don't know, like eight years of school before that, I was mm -hmm. kind of just checked out. But that is really easy stuff. So when I got to high school, it got harder, and I learned what I really didn't like and what I really did like. I hated math. I couldn't, I just like wasn't a math guy. Um, I was in the lower math, but I would always get like 100%. So I, I kind of cheated myself. <laughs> I, would, I would purposely fail the test where you would get into oh a math class yeah, so, I could get, so I could get into the <laughs> easiest one. And then I would just just ace the easiest like class and it would help my GPA so that was good um science I was really interested in because I feel like it's just like facts about our life and like our like the evolution of human beings and I really was interested in that but then when I got um into 10th grade I went into this class called marketing and this other class called entrepreneurship and those two classes were like by far my favorite classes I never skipped I was always right on time got really good grades in that class and I always paid attention and I really like invested my full abilities into that class so mm -hmm. that's why I feel like I truly love that class but I think it kind of reflects in retrospect you know it reflects on like what I'm doing now it, or in hindsight it like foreshadowed what I'm doing now because I technically you know I'm an entrepreneur I own my own business and we are work me and Johnson you know we're business partners and so it's, it's really cool that that kind of like foreshadowed what I'm mm -hmm. doing now. 
Were you watching any movies or TV shows that inspired you or like the comedy aspects for your initial vines? Oh, for sure. I mean, the comedy aspects for our initial vines were definitely like Will Ferrell, John C. Riley, like step, movies like Step Brothers and mm -hmm. like these random just <laughs> funny movies that you could tell was improv, like the funniest moments, but it was just something magical about that comedic moment. And so there's, I think going way back to like 98, you know, like when I was two years old, I loved to just entertain people in any way possible, whether that was to sing, to dance, to act, to like tell a joke, whatever it was, I just loved to have the attention on me. I wasn't like a, you know, like an attention obsessed person, but I just loved to see people smile and make them laugh. What clicked to you to be in a duo with Jack? Like, did you ever consider being a solo artist? Honestly, no, and we never even had the conversation like, yo, should we just do this and make music together? It was always a thing, like, because when we introduced ourselves to our fans through social media, it was always Jack and Jack, and of course we've had our individual accounts, and we've had individual followers that, you know, Jack might have that I don't have, or I might have that Jack doesn't have, but it was just a matter of, like, you know, we came up together doing this, like, I'd rather work with you than work alone, so... We started making music and we never even thought about it. We just put it out and that was it. It was Jack and Jack. So I think going forward in the future and even in the past, we've worked separately on things as individual artists or individual entertainers or whatever. But I think we'll continue to make music together and, and separately. Like I don't think people should mm. be afraid that we're going to split up because that'll never happen. We've been friends since kindergarten now, yeah. four years old. I'm 21 now and uh, not shit has changed. So we're definitely going to stay the exact same in terms of being friends and being a, a business together. But I don't think we should limit ourselves and not let ourselves venture out into these new horizons where we can possibly do amazing things. So mm -hmm. I think in the future we'll definitely make stuff separate from one another and together. What was it like working with Timbaland? Working with Timbaland was pretty incredible. I mean, Personally, growing up, I was never the guy looking up things on YouTube. I was always just kind of like taking in information as it came to me. So obviously I had known who Timbaland was. I had seen his name come across on my radio as a kid, but I never knew what he looked like. So the first time we met, um, I didn't get that starstruck feeling that like you would normally mm. get from such, uh, you know, like a legendary producer or a celebrity like someone might, might think when they meet Timbaland, but I didn't know who he was outside of just, I know he made music and he was really good at it. So when we met him, I had no idea what he looked like. I shook his hand. I didn't yeah. know it was him at first. And I think that helped the process yeah. because it didn't throw off the vibe at all. Mm -hmm. Neither Jack or I were starstruck in that moment. And Timbaland was just super, super accepting of our new artistry and like, you know, times have changed since he first started making music. So I, I think it was amazing because when we got together, he understood that we're not going to be doing the same stuff that people were doing in the studio 20 years ago. We innovate and we make new uh, ways of creating music, you know, and I think he, he really respected that and he found a way to work with us through that. And uh, we had a great time in the studio, man. I mean, <laughs> I can't tell you the number of days we spent. I think we went a full month where every day, I think it was t two Mays ago? Yeah. Something like that. A really long time ago. About a year ago, probably. Not that long, actually. But, uh, yeah, it was just amazing. We spent all of May together in the studio, and he, I've learned so much from him just over the years. And we work out at the exact same uh, gym in L.A., oh. so we, we continue <laughs> to see him. And he's just always telling us motivating things. and trying to get us on the right track so I really really respect him. Did you have some mentor for music or people to ask about when you were going from transitioning from more of the vine to take to doing music professionally? Man a mentor for music honestly I feel like a lot of people didn't fully like believe in Jack and I when we came over to do music from social media because they thought that we were just like these kids who had amassed these followers and now they just want to make money, so they're going to put music out, which was completely not the case. Like, I know we talked about it earlier. I was in show choir. Johnson has been rapping since, like, he was three feet tall, and, <laughs> like, which is only, like, two years ago now. But still, he, he's been rapping for a very long No, I'm kidding. He's been rapping for, like, ten years now. So it's crazy to see, 
I guess like how we've evolved. But to answer your question, I don't think we've had like a mentor, mm -hmm. so to speak. I just think that because we're a duo, we always have each other, and mm -hmm. that allows us to, of course, like be freely creative. But when something is a little off or it doesn't feel right, like there's another one of us to kind of counteract it and work towards the solution and find a way to make everything as good as it can be. Mm -hmm. So I would say no, there's probably not a mentor that I would yeah. say specifically, just us two together. Mm -hmm. I asked this also to Sammy Wilk, but did you have difficulties with like trusting people at a young age um, if they wanted to like if they were like sketchy when you started to get into music or oh I mean LA. yeah I mean yeah yeah, yeah definitely because we moved out to LA four years ago exactly four years ago and we were pretty young you know I was 17 and Jack was 18 and we were very easily taking advantage uh, very, it would have been very easy to take advantage of us luckily mm -hmm. I think we had good heads on our shoulders and we have great parents who support us through everything and kind of keep an eye on everything as well to make sure we're not you know getting screwed or anything mm. and so I would say yes 100% I was fearful that something bad might happen someone might take advantage of us but I was so young and even though it was only four years ago you mature a lot from 17 to 21 and I was so mentally youthful that I had not a worry in the world I had just gotten to LA I was fine like everything in my life was going perfectly so I really wasn't that scared of anything happening and I didn't realize how true the things people would tell me before I came to LA are you know like people are out to get you there are snakes in the in the in the grass and uh, there are definitely people who want something that you have if you have something that can be monetized or anything that's lucrative at all people want a piece of it and I didn't understand that at all and sometimes it happens right in front of your eyes and like it's tough to see because you might like this person or even love this person that just wants something from you you know and it's so hard to think that they might just be using you when like mm. you feel like you have a genuine relationship with them but then of course after time passes you know you realize sometimes these, these people that you love the most or that you feel like care about you as well don't actually care about you because they're just using you for something that you have so that's something that you have to be very careful about in LA I would say I was never really that scared I was always just in the back of my mind about it but now it's like okay we've seen we've seen a lot of crazy stuff out here and I feel like we can now navigate very smoothly through any situation that we're in in LA mm -hmm. but yeah it's definitely for anyone coming out here I would definitely say just be careful because if you're truly talented, people are going to want something from you. Mm -hmm. How do you think your music has changed since the early songs you wrote? Man, our music has changed drastically. I mean, the very first song that I wrote was a song called Distance, and it wasn't truthfully about anything, you know? Mm -hmm. um, of course, the song is about something, but it, to me, it didn't mean anything. And I think back in the day, I was writing things that I you know thought people wanted to hear or maybe this would be good for a song title or this is good to sing about but now it's more I pull straight from the heart and when I'm writing a song I sit down and I think about what am I feeling right now today like what's going on in my life and that allows me to really focus in and write something that's authentic and true to who I am whereas back in the day I don't think I was very passionate about everything that I was saying even though I knew I would I wanted to make music and I knew I wanted to sing and entertain people I didn't know like what to say and now it's not like even a question in my mind it's just how do I feel that's mm -hmm. that's really the only question so I feel like the biggest way that our music has changed is it's mature now and there's true passion behind the lyrics that we're saying we're being fully honest and we're not really making music for anybody but ourselves of course we want to make music for our fans that helps people get through tough times or maybe you know just music to put on at a party or whatever but when it comes down to it we're really only making music for ourselves because that's our outlet emotionally to just get away from our problems so we just write down our problems and then we sing them and when people also feel that way and relate to our own problems it makes us feel good and I feel like that's kind of the formula for an artist is as messed up as it sounds like 
it doesn't really do anything but make you feel better, you know? So it's like, it's kind of like this depressing, uh, like, I guess, what do you call it? It's like a, it's a sad, like, way to think about it. But almost every artist that you hear on the radio is, is feeling something about something, which is, yeah. <laughs> is obvious, but I'm saying, like, they just put their problems into a song, hoping people feel the same way. But there's no guarantee. It's just like, that's their release from the sorrow or the pain that they're feeling. And so I feel like the biggest way that our music has changed is the maturity and the way our tones have changed, our delivery. We're super, we're much more confident now than we ever were back then because mm. we were in high school and we were releasing our very first music. And we had to go to school the next day and just get a bunch of shit from our friends about, oh, like you're putting a song out, like what are you doing? Like they didn't get it. And now it's like, that's my profession. So people out here, they understand, you know, like, I'm a singer, I, I'm in a group, but back in the day, I, I was holding back so much because I felt like I'm just a high school kid. I'm not like this, this pop star or anything because like I'm surrounded by all these other high school kids who are telling me that you have to be a normal high school kid. Mm -hmm. now, now I'm in LA where everyone's telling everybody, you gotta be the best version of yourself you can be. So I'm striving to be that person instead of trying to keep myself in this bubble in high school. Mm -hmm. So I think just letting loose and being free, for sure, yeah. has changed our music. What would you say have been your biggest challenges so far? Biggest challenges so far? Oh man, I mean, I think every day is a challenge, you know? Mm -hmm. Even if you love what you're doing, you, st you gotta get up and you gotta continue to do it if you wanna keep living the life that you're living. So. Every day is a challenge, you know, you gotta motivate yourself to get up. Some days are easier, some days are harder, but I would say, man, my biggest challenge. I would just say that I've been like blessed, mm -hmm. that I haven't had too many problems in my life and mm -hmm. I've had such supportive parents, such supportive family, such a supportive friend group that nothing in my life, even my biggest problems are that challenging to deal with because I have so many great people around me to help me get through it. And I think that's the point of having family and friends is to just make you feel good. And that's the point because life doesn't last forever. You just have to make the most of every moment. So if you can figure out a way to just feel good all the time, that's the way to do it, mm -hmm. family and friends. Yeah, what does love mean to you? Love. I feel like I'm still figuring that out for sure. Mm -hmm. But I think what love to, means to me, love just means that you will do anything in your power to keep, I don't even know how to say it. <laughs> love, uh, love is, I mean, it's so tough because I don't want to use other vocab words in, in, in <laughs> like, love. In, yeah. yeah, while describing <laughs> love. But love is just like, it encompasses all good feelings, mm -hmm. you know? When you love someone or something, you will do anything to make sure that that thing or person stays safe. And you'll also do anything to make sure that that person or thing is happy and, and is in a good place mentally. But I guess if it's a thing, it doesn't have a mind. But <laughs> regardless, mm -hmm. I, I think it just means that you really care for this thing or this person. And you'll do anything for them mm -hmm. yeah last question what do you want to be remembered for man what do i want to be remembered for that's a lot of pressure i just hope that uh one day you know when i'm gone and people live on i just hope the people who knew me and knew my name will think the good things you mm -hmm. know that's all i can hope is just positive energy associated with my name and my brand. I just want people to hear my music or see my work and I want them to be inspired to positively impact the world, you know, and make good decisions in general, be nice to other people. That's really what it comes down to. Of course, I could say something like, you know, I want to be remembered for being the best singer. I want to be remembered mm -hmm. for be like the best model or this or that but like that's all just titles and you know stuff that the human race has created i really really just want no matter what kind of species or you know like because in the future we have no idea some someday 
we could share this planet with another high mind being, mm-hmm. which sounds so trippy, but I'm getting way too deep. But I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> yeah. I, want, I want people to just have positive energy because the more positive energy, the less negative energy. And, you know, the better the places we go. So yeah, I I'm, love that. I'm praying that that's where we're headed yeah Yeah. this is awesome thank you so much no of course (laughs) bye guys